Okay, next on the list is um, productivity hacks to stretch your time. So Singaporeans like to stretch their dollar. We have someone here who will teach us how to stretch our time. So can we welcome Mr. Mittal from Hello Pay, Southeast Asia. Okay. Try not to stand in front of speaker. You, you, okay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, we had a few speakers already, so I'll take a slightly different turn to what we need to do. A lot of us, you have seen NTUC brochure, stretch your dollar. Every one of us keeps on saying, oh, I can't do this because I don't have time. Oh, I can't do this. I wish I had more time. I would love to have this hobby, but I don't have time. We are all always complaining about not having enough time. While what we do not understand, the most successful of the people, we saw all these great designers and great people, they also have 24 hours. None of them has 25 hours, 48 hours. They had the same amount of time. But they did something that they could do way more than apparently a lot of us. On my own, I try to do a lot more. I would love to do a lot more than what I do today. At this moment, I have a senior position in a company. I run teams in five countries, have two uh, non-profits which I run, have a fund which is invested in five companies. So I try to do, but I still have a feeling I wish I had more time. But what we do not understand is humans are more powerful than computers. The reason why computers are not doing everything is because there are things which human brain can do. There are ways in which human brain can think. There are ways in which human brain can align things. My friends talked about young generation has low attention span, ADHD kind of syndromes, want change. All of that happens. I see right now a few of you are still using Facebook. Even as I talk, they're scrolling through those timelines because our brains are like that. We are always looking for more. And always there is a fear of missing out. Let, let me get this, let me get this. So I figured out that who's the best person to learn it from. Let's see someone who's done it way, way more, a lot of more complicated things in parallel. And if there is a framework, if there is a way he has defined to do things, can we learn from that? Dwight Eisenhower, uh, 16th General to the United States Army, President of the United States from 1953 to 61. He was the one who preceded John F. Kennedy. Most of the people know about John F. Kennedy, but they don't know about this person. The per this person led the United States armies in the World War II and the whole Allied armies. Imagine the kind of things that person has to worry about. He is leading a war, uh, the biggest war in the history of the world, and he's on the forefront. Battles going on 100 places, and then he moves to the Cold War United States, leading it for eight years. So he created a simple, simple matrix, four boxes. Simple. What is important? What is not important? What is urgent? What is not urgent? That's it. Not too complicated, no McKinsey, BCG kind of frameworks, cows, ducks, dogs running around, uh, alpha, beta charts, um, pyramids, hierarchies, nothing. Square, a simple square. Even the kids understand a square. As simple as that. The reason why most of us do not have time is because we do whatever is thrown at us, we do not see whether it's required. How many of you receive email newsletter from e-commerce companies? Email newsletter from e-commerce companies. How many of you mindlessly scroll the internet, going through the website, trying to find something interesting? So many of you are just trying to refresh that same timeline of Facebook. Keep on refreshing that. Where does that fit here? How many of you have made a phone call to your siblings who are, if your sibling is staying overseas, how many of you have made a phone call to them in the last three days? How? Good, the few. <laughs> the, the thing is, we have so many things to do, but what we do not, even, even kids, they have so much pressure on them. 
they are like, okay, they have to do this hobby, they have to do this, they have to do this homework, they have to attend events like this, they have to go on exhibition, they have to play sports, they have to do cartoon. But as parents, as elders, this is our responsibility that we help it, we make it easy for them to process. Once we start to do it this way, what I did personally, I removed Facebook from my phone. I, I removed all of these newsletter subscriptions. So what I did was, I was on a vacation. I did not, could not check my email for four days, which meant there was a lot of trash in my inbox. I said, okay, let me see which of these emails I do not need. I managed to remove about 32 email subscriptions. That's about 64 emails per week. For a person like me who has eight email inboxes configured on his phone, 64 emails down a week, that's some efficiency. For in, even in your Facebook, even if you're so addicted to it, look at how many notifications you are getting. Even if you shut down half of your notifications, half of those rent groups where you joined because you were selling something or buying something, and every time they pop up, if you just shut down those, you will start to see some savings. Every just take out your phones and look at those apps and shut down those push notifications you have. Take out time that, okay, if I'm doing this, I'm not gonna touch my phone. Your phones take away so much time. I mean, I have worked for phone companies, I've worked for telcos, so that I can say from that experience. The reason why we are not able to accomplish what we want to. I mean, the only thing which I ask for all of you is once you go back, Pick out a list of 20 things which you would like to do in the nine months left in this year. 20 things. You, all the resolutions which you never fulfilled in this year, uh, or you started to but forgot somewhere, put down those and map them here. And you will find out that a lot of things will be actually fine. You will find them going into this one. Delegate, delete one. Watching television, social media, junk mail, and the more and the important and urgent. So important and not urgent, those are the critical ones. Important and urgent, you all will do because your boss will yell, your wife will yell, your kids will yell. The, the thing which we forget is the important and not urgent. You have your life health goals. What are you doing for those? And if every week you are not logging in something in the important and not urgent box, then something is not right. The first box will take care of itself. And if it's not important, then if it's urgent, it will automatically create its priority. It's the second quadrant which we all lose out. And as our life keeps on running faster and faster, we lose track of that. And all our attention is always focused on the one and three, the do and the delegate. In the delegate, you need to see what are the things which we can outsource. Like Honest Bee is a good example. If you are not gonna achieve, if you, if spending time with your family or spending time with your parents who are 75 year old right now, is that more important than buying groceries? Than buying those uh, bananas from uh, NTUC? Not so much. Yeah, honest people will take, take a couple of dollars, that's fine. But all those people, because buying groceries, it does, it's, it's important, maybe, not so important. You can order it from some places. It's not urgent. It's, it's urgent, but it's not important. You can, anyone else doing it for you doesn't, does not rock your life. Those kind of stuff we need to pick and dump it down so that we have space for the quadrant two. So this is, this is a very simple way to look at life. Once you start to, I mean, people call that this is, like you became becoming too mechanical, too measure measuring. I say this is this simplifies the process for me. There was this joke: Barack Obama has the same brand of cereal for the last eight years. Not that he can't afford, but every morning he says, "My brain and my time is too precious for me to choose." You see Steve Jobs, why he always wore the same shirt. If you see Mark Zuckerberg, he has, always has the same shirt. You do not see twenty-five different shades of the of the t-shirt which he wears. Because the successful people figure out that, uh, that making that choice does not add any additional value. People call, rest of the people say, oh, this is brand, this is this. 
more than brand, it's, it's saving time. They can afford anything. They can, even in the brand, they can do a lot. They can hire a full PR agency to build this brand for them. But what they're trying to say is, if I can reduce those options, if I can save my time, for them, the fact that they don't have to think about what to wear is the same thing. That is a value add. Every morning, this, he says two to five minutes, in, super precious for a billionaire. Even more precious for a president of a country. So those are the small pieces which people can do. I'm not saying don't do fashion. I'm not saying uh, shut down from social life. I'm saying prioritize and figure out what are you doing with the box two in your life. That's it. Just figure out the box two. Rest everything will take care of itself. That's it. Simple, small. That's all I can say. I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very enlightening. I, I think the opportunity, uh, as you are talking about, is with technology, it could relegate some of the things that used to be important and then bring it down to like, uh, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Delegate. So we've seen like transportation. Earlier we would say, oh, uh, it will take this much time. We have to go ourselves. Now we can hire a person to actually get, pick that and deliver that for us. We, we have used technology for so many pieces. And we should continue to use. And whenever we are saying, oh, that's going to cost $6. Yes, it's going to cost $6 for that delivery fees. But what are you going to do with that time? What's the value of that time? So yeah. it has to be measured in context. Mm. As someone said before me, context is very important. And outsourcing it, is, is there is nothing, no shame about it. You're doing it for a better good for your own self, for the quadrant two of your life. <coughs> All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. You know what's interesting? What he's saying and then what Tim was saying before, like um, what's the value of that time going to buy bananas with your parents? You know, there's no, it's so transactional. But what Tim was saying is if he builds an experience around that at retail level that enriches that experience, then going down with your grandmother to, or grandparents to buy banana is a rewarding life experience, something that you can learn off from. You know, so that's, it's how brands now want to, and products want to portray themselves. Do you want to be purely transactional or do you want to have a relationship?